with a whole cluster of multimedia keys. You have a second command dial, eight total macros. This is the macro king of gaming keyboards, man. There is a lot to cover in today's review of the brand new Razer Black Widow V4 Pro keyboard, making this another release in the Black Widow lineup. The V4 Pro is a full-size layout. You got a top aluminum plate with some additional physical features that can make the added extra footprint worthwhile, including a super nice attachable wrist rest that uses these magnetic pogo pins for continuous chroma lighting synced all along the sides of the keyboard for some extra glow. And that's all at just first glance. So, what makes this pro? Well, checking it all out, on the top right side, you have your typical multimedia keys. These buttons here are for dedicated, like a back, forward, and pause buttons for playback, with a mute button to the right side, and a nice knurled volume wheel right above that, which sits perfectly uniform with the body. The where it gets interesting is over on the left side of the board. Here up top, we have another wheel known as their command dial for a bunch of macros on the fly. And speaking of which, not only do we have five dedicated macro keys running down the side of the board as M1 through M5, but we also have three more buttons integrated onto the actual left side of the keyboard. Whew, that's a lot. As for that control dial, this is a killer addition besides the multimedia cluster that we already have because this can be configured to be whatever you want, really. Whether that's for gaming or productivity in Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere, you name it. In Synapse, you can go in and choose what you want this to be. The preset functions, it's kind of set to things like out of the box, like RGB uh, brightness control, window scrolling, zooming, stuff like that. But this is an awesome bonus in addition to the five dedicated macros already below it. Now, to those three left side buttons. These guys are cool, but admittedly in a bit of an awkward spot. Since they're a slimmer, longer button, the placement is like right on the side where like I constantly accidentally hit it whenever I'm moving my keyboard around. During the filming of this review, getting on the B-roll, I must have pressed this like a hundred times on accident, just moving it, because it's naturally, this is kind of where your hand goes when you want to move a keyboard. And again, it's great to have three additional buttons, um, but one thing I would do, kind of a little uh, workaround, is disable these stock, However, in Synapse, you can set these to be a command through like a hypershift, for example. So if you enable hypershift, you can then have these be whatever you want only when you press shift. So you still have access to them, but then you won't be constantly hitting them on accident. Just a little tip for you. On the back side of the keyboard, we do have a removable USB-C cable. Two of them, in fact. Razer does include two USB-C cables inside the box for you because one is used to power the keyboard, obviously, and the other one acts as a pass-through for that USB slot right next to it. So this can be used for plugging in like, you know, your wireless peripherals, flash drives, for example. Um, however, more, you know, power-hungry devices like an external eight terabyte hard drive, for example, obviously uh, won't work with this. And if you want to, for whatever reason, use like a custom coiled aviator cable, that also won't work with powering this just because of that uh, power loss and stuff along the way. Now, I will say I'm not a fan visually of having two cables coming out of the keyboard. I really wish they could have made it just one. Would have been a lot more aesthetically pleasing and we know it's possible. Moving on, the keycaps here are a double shot ABS. And I really like the way that Razer does their key sets because they're a thicker ABS material. And the keycaps themselves have this really nice slight texture to them to avoid fingerprints. And the font is super clean as well, all while still allowing even shine through at the same time for the chroma lighting inside. Some companies out there still just have like super obnoxious font on their keycaps or they absorb oils from your fingerprints so where the whole thing is just an eyesore, but Razer does it right with their keycaps. Underneath those keycaps, we do have some loop stabilizers. It's not an obnoxious amount, but it's enough to make a difference, I'd say. And they appear to be a type of like a plate mount, which I much prefer over those weird clip stabilizers they used in the past. We'll do a sound test in just a minute coming up so you can hear how this unit sounds. As for the actual switches, nothing really new here. These are their 2020 release of their yellow linear switch, which are very similar in theory to that of like a Speed Silver. They actually at 1.2 millimeters at 45 grams, with a total travel distance of 3.5 millimeters. They're rated for 100 million clicks, and we do have some integrated dampening in the switch itself to further mute the overall sound. And that's in addition to the two layers of dampening foam inside the keyboard already. 
In terms of stability and stem wobble, these are pretty tight to the housing. So there's practically zero wobble vertically or horizontally to the switch. And the keycap is nice. So it won't just be wobbling on your fingers. Tighter is always better than loose. And they do offer this keyboard in their clicky razor green switch, but they're not my cup of tea. All right, so now we'll do the sound test for you with the Black Widow V4 Pro and their linear yellow switches. So I mean, really not too bad for a keyboard like this from Razer. The switches themselves, the yellow linears, they feel relatively smooth. They're definitely not as scratchy as like Cherry Silver's, for example. They're not as smooth as Razer's own uh, Lopti Loptical? optical red linear switches, uh, but they're definitely good enough, I'd say. Um, overall, it gives a really nice experience. And stabilizers definitely weren't too bad either. It is overall a muted sounding keyboard just because of the dampening that they have inside the keyboard itself, as well as integrated into the switches. So it's not gonna be loud even for a linear switch. When you're typing and stuff, it's all about the ergonomics, right? They do include a really nice wrist rest I showed you earlier. It's pretty similar. It kind of mimics like a carbon fiber material, very soft and cushiony. And what I like about this is they have these magnetic pogo pins on this strap here. So when you want to attach it and you put it on the bottom, you'll see all around it has this real nice continuous RGB lighting sink and um, it's seamless. It plugs right in and you're good to go. I remember in years past when companies would try to, you know, do this sort of click in integration, it was always very inconsistent. And um, even I think on one of their earlier Huntsman keyboards, it might've been, I had to tape it because it was constantly coming undone. Here, nice and improved. Now for my time using this, how did it perform? What are my thoughts? All that stuff. Well, first up, another feature to the V4 Pro is the fact that this has 8K Hertz polling rate. So not only do we have speed switches, but now this is reporting to your PC at 8K, which is eight times faster than the standard traditional 1000 Hertz polling rate of most keyboards out there. I will admit it definitely felt a bit more snappy. Can't lie. Now is 8K gonna be a game changer? Not really. That increased polling rate is definitely more important to a mouse, which is, you know, constantly tracking your movement 24 seven versus a keyboard that's gonna have four or five movements at once. So it's not as important on a keyboard, but the fact you have it is cool. And another thing is this doesn't take up more CPU usage than if you were just gaming at the 1K Hertz. A lot of times with an 8K Hertz polling rate mouse or keyboard, for example, it will use more CPU usage, but here that's not the case. Definitely nice to see. So I wanted to bring that up. So at the end of the day, this is a crazy macro king gaming keyboard. All the stuff that you're gonna need built right in. The footprint, it's large. It's not only a full size keyboard, but you have extra room on the left side here to fit in the five extra keys and the command dial. So it's definitely pretty hefty. I know for me, I'm much more fan of the 65 or the 75% layout, um, a nice smaller compact footprint. But the thing with being a YouTuber is when I show off those keyboards, people complain, it doesn't have a numpad. When I show off a full size keyboard, people complain it's too big and no one uses it anymore. So yes, while you have all this functionality built in now, it is gonna come at the cost of taking up more room on your desktop. So whether that's a deal breaker for you, I don't know, probably not. Cause if you're gonna need all these macros and functions, there's gonna need to be a place for them, right? So that's what you're getting here with the V4 Pro. Tons and tons of customization and macros. Now it's also $230, which yes, is definitely pricey, but that aligns out there with the rest of the high-end flagship gaming keyboard market, really, um, from Razer, from Corsair. So sure, a bit of a quick sticker shock for you, but that's kind of what the average price is, like I said, for the flagship release from these big gaming companies. So 
Altogether, I'm really impressed. Um, as a macro lover myself, you guys know me, I'm constantly buying different macro pads and desktop command dials and stuff. This has got it all and some. Really great stuff from Razer. And that'll wrap it up for my review of the Black Widow V4 Pro. Hope you all enjoyed. If you want to check it out, I'll have it listed for you in the description down below. If you like this review, give it a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.